Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss one very important concept related to Snowflake, okay? And that is specially related to stored procedure. That is how you can execute multiple similar kind of queries using Snowflake stored procedure, okay? So this kind of concept is very helpful in designing a particular part of your ETL architecture in big data world, especially if you are using Snowflake as cloud data warehouse, right? So let's see without any further delay. All the codes I'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section as usual. So first what we are doing, we are dropping a database from if it exists and then here we are creating the database and then here we are using the database, okay? Right? Now, here what we are doing, we are creating some tables, okay? So if I refresh this particular place, here you will see Ramu database is created by default information scheme and public schema are there. And then here what we are doing, we are creating a table called stadium, okay. So here let it execute, we are inserting some dummy data, right. And it is done, now if I execute select start from stadium, we will able to see 8 records got inserted, okay. So if I refresh this particular place, here you will able to see the stadium table is there in public schema, right. Then here I am going to create another table which is having the name stay employee and then here I am going to insert some data. Now if I execute select start from stay employee, here you will be getting 7 rows, okay, whatever we inserted. Then here we are creating another table called employee 2, we are inserting some data, okay. And then here if we execute select start from employee 2, here employee 2 table also created. So if I refresh this place, here you will be able to see in the public schema employee to stadium and this STA employee is created, right? Now suppose the business requirement is drop all the tables which are having the name STA in it, okay? Like stadium should be dropped and STA employee should be dropped, but not employee to, okay? Then how you can understand this? Basically you have to execute multiple drop queries, okay? And you might not know how many tables are there which is having the name like STA, okay? And that many drop queries you have to execute dynamically, okay? So how you can do that? So first let us try to understand how we can get those tables which is having STA in it, okay? So for that you can go to information schema which basically store all the metadata and then here you can see there is a particular view called tables okay if you just click on that and if you click on preview data here you will be getting all the object information whatever is there in the ramu database okay so if you see here table name is there table schema is there so let us try to extract these columns okay suppose i will execute this query see let's start from ramu dot information schema dot tables okay so ramu is the database information schema is the schema and under that tables is the view name okay where table name like percentage sta percentage that is for those tables which is having sta in it those will be returning and table schema is public okay only we want those uh, basically table names which is having sta in it in public schema not in some other schema okay so if i execute that here we will able to get that stadium and sta employee whatever we created here that is sta employee here we created and stadium here we created right so these two informations it is able to give us okay so now here from these particular two rows we are getting that two times drop query we have to execute okay so for how we can create that drop query dynamically here basically the string concatenation concept is going to help us okay so if you see this is simple concept select table schema then pipe symbol we are using for concatenation we are giving a dot because that's how we define the object, right? The complete name that is database name dot schema name dot table name like that. So here schema and table in between that we are giving dot and then keeping the rest of the part as it is. Okay. So if I execute this particular place here, you will be getting the actual complete name of the tables along with the schema. Okay. Which we have to drop. Okay. Now suppose we want to execute that. What we can do? We can basically add the drop table in the beginning of these rows, right? So that's why this particular query select drop table and then table schema and then table name. All things we are doing just string concatenation. That's it, okay? And keeping the rest part as it is. So let's execute that. So here you will see dynamically here our drop comments are created, okay? Now what we can do? We can create a stored procedure 
and then we can execute them one by one simple right basically in result set you can iterate and then you can execute them one by one very simple but here if you see this name of the column is coming kind of not usual so what we will do we will give an alias so maybe alias name we are giving execute query okay so drop table then space then table schema dot table name and the column name we are giving execute query and keeping the rest part as it is let us execute that here you will able to get that execute query is the column name and which content all the queries which has to be executed okay right so now what we will do we will create a stored procedure right so try to understand this concept one single stored procedure first it will detect dynamically how many tables are there in this particular ramu database which is having such names which contain sta okay in the public schema and that many drop query it will be creating dynamically based on the string concatenation and that we will try to execute okay so here the default format till this i hope you know that is drop table if required some argument you can pass return string not null language javascript all fine as and then here we have written our code okay so first step what we are writing here here basically we are writing the select query which is basically creating this drop comments okay then here we are creating this statement and then here we are executing that okay so result set 1 basically will contain these informations okay the drop table queries okay now here we are giving a output which is capture result set which we will return okay so return type is string here we are returning capture result so capture result will basically contain what are the queries it executed okay so fair capture result equal to executed the queries okay and then new line character we are giving then while result set one dot next what it is saying that here whatever this select query result will be getting there will be keep on iterating okay so now we are having two rows okay but suppose in our public schema in the ramu database there are four tables which is having sta in the table name then four drop query will be added right so that time to make it dynamic what we are doing we are using while loop okay we are not using for loop with such certain number of iteration so while result set one dot next while it is having next value what we are doing we are extracting the current value of that row based on execute query so if you see this is the column name execute query right so that single row value we are extracting and then again for that particular individual row we are creating the statement and we are executing okay so this complete stuff is written by the first select query and in that select query we are iterating and individual row after extracting using get column value we are creating this SQL statement and then here we are executing. Okay. And once that is executed, what we are doing here? We are storing that in the capture result so that it will return that these are the queries which I executed. Okay. And basically slash n we are giving so that each executed queries will be coming in new line. Okay. Right. And then at the end of the day, we are returning the capture result. So let's execute that and it's done. Okay. So it is successfully done. And now here, if you see, if I just twist this information schema here, you will see currently three tables are there. Now, STA, this particular stuff is present in stadium as well as ST employee. So, after executing this particular stored procedure using call stored procedure name command, what should happen? That stadium and STA employee should be dropped, but employee 2 should be there. Okay. So, if I refresh this, currently you see that all three are there. Now, what we are doing? We are executing this. Okay. So, see. Here it returns something. What it returned? That is executed the queries. Okay. Drop table public dot stadium, drop table public dot sta employees. Okay. So now if I refresh this particular schema here, only employee two table is there. Both sta employee as well as stadium is gone. Okay. Right. So I hope you understood how this is working okay so using this particular way kind of similar queries okay you might not know how many drop queries has to be executed okay beforehand so you, you can use this kind of dynamic string concatenation and generate the SQL queries and then execute them individually one by one using this kind of stored procedure okay and writing stored procedure is very simple I have already shared you the common template right you can check the description link also they are that common same template i am using here nothing new okay right now the question comes what is the application of this okay so in industry here this particular concept widely used 
in refreshing external table okay think about a big data pipeline okay so maybe suppose you are having your ingestion process that ingestion process is loading the data as a batch data okay from any oltp system to your data lake okay that the data lake suppose that is s3 okay then after that using some particular big data tool either that can be talent or that that can be pyspark or that can be spark with scala whatever you did some kind of business transformation okay and then that curated data you have published in a particular s3 layer okay suppose that is published layer that is the end layer in our data lake now from s3 what you want to do you want to load that process data in a snowflake external table okay now by default if you want you can execute alter refresh command to refresh the table once your data reaches to the last s3 layer right that is one way right now how you can execute the alter refresh command on external table like for example suppose for a particular big data pipeline you are having five external snowflake tables for another big data pipeline you might be having 20 snowflake external table so 20 times you have to execute alter external table then table name refresh only the table name will be changed right but the more or less the sql query pattern is same so that time you can use this particular procedure what you can do you can create a metadata table okay and in that metadata table, you might be creating this kind of schema. First column will be sequence number. Next will be database name in which the external table is present, which you want to refresh. Then the schema name and then the table name. So these three will give the complete table name, complete table information. Okay. And then the pipeline name. So in the big data world, you in your company might be thousands of big data pipeline they are running. So whatever external table are coming under one particular pipeline, you can group them together based on pipeline name so maybe suppose pipeline name you can give as a uh, real time demo something okay and this same name you can put for 20 different external tables who are related to that same pipeline okay and then here updated by so that you can keep a track in the metadata table who updated that particular uh, row okay that kind of stuff also you can create now what will happen you can create a stored procedure where like how here I created dynamically drop table query instead of that here using string concatenation what you can do you can create alter external table refresh query just the table name you need right so that you can basically get from the metadata table where these informations are stored max to max you might need to pass the pipeline name so what you can do that time the pipeline name you can pass in this particular procedure as argument and that one you can put in the filter condition here okay and here instead of lamu.information dot information schema dot tables what i used here you can use the metadata table name where this which basically contain all this metadata information okay that way you will be getting all the alter refresh command for all the tables who are belonging to a particular etl pipeline group okay and then you can execute all of them together using this kind of uh, dynamic queries okay so this is very powerful concept using one single stored procedure you can basically execute multiple similar sql queries right this is all for my this video all the codes i'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section and if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you haven't subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of all latest videos thank you